Earlier, Jeff Greenfield took a look at our troubled newspapers and their future. Now another take from the folks at Fast Draw, Mitch Butler and Josh Landis. The future of newspapers is looking surprisingly like the past. You know how blogs and online articles have a little space at the end for you to leave your comments? Look at this, America's very first newspaper, Public Occurrences. You can see the last page is blank. The printer didn't run out of ink. It was printed that way on purpose so readers could add their comments and pass the paper along. Kind of like the comments on blogs. It caused a major commotion in 1690. Some loved it. Others said the stories were too controversial and the sources were unreliable. Sounds a lot like today. Back then, the earliest journalists, Ben Franklin was one of them, were a lot like bloggers, except they were called pamphleteers. They operated small presses by hand. Thomas Paine's Common Sense is one you might have heard of. It advocated American independence from Great Britain. People listened, and after the Revolutionary War, a new age of publishing began. Newspapers helped America form an identity as they debated important political issues of the time. The number of blogs is exploding today, but back in the 1800s, the number of newspapers was exploding. With new steam-powered penny presses, publishers could run off lots of copies and sell lots of ads, making newspapers more profitable. They also introduced new kinds of illustrations that captured the public's attention. The other big breakthrough? Yellow journalism reporting that sought out scandalous news. And if there wasn't any scandalous news, the papers just made it up. Sound familiar? With so many blogs out there today, it's hard to know what's credible and what's not. But still, people love to read them. By 1915, there were more than 14,000 daily and weekly newspapers in the country. That was the peak. But then things changed and the number of voices began to fall. Big chains bought up smaller papers. Magazines pulled readers away. Over the years, heavy competition from radio, and then from television, and then from the internet. But just like public occurrences, and thousands like it, today, bloggers and other emerging sources are providing millions of new voices. So a look back in time shows that where once there were many voices, there then became few. That makes today look like a return to the olden days. Many voices.